We heard the stat this past week. It received widespread media attention. The average American family and what we used to call the middle class lost almost 40 percent of their worth from 07 to 2010 in what economists now refer to as the Great Recession. And remember, it started with housing and the housing market remains bleak with a few exceptions, among them parts of Miami and South Florida. Tonight, Natalie Morales shows us who's buying in and why they are creating the kind of Miami heat they could use right about now. Hello, Felix. It's a typical day for real estate broker Cristiano Piquet. He's got a client in his roles, and the client, Antonio Luciano, is ready to pay cash. Lots and lots of cash. So where are we going to go today? Well, my client, Antonio, asked me to see something on the beach. Piquet has already sold him two other properties in downtown Miami. He actually bought a, a property over the phone. So he bought the place sight unseen. He wire transferred the money, um, paid everything cash, of course, like all the Brazilians are doing. Flush with cash from a strong economy, waves of wealthy Brazilians are landing on and buying up South Florida shores. Here at the W on South Beach, Brazilians own almost half of the condos. This is probably one of the hottest uh, buildings right now. Okay. Welcome to 1728, three bedroom, three and a half bath with den, direct ocean, nine million. Nine million dollars? Yes. Let's see what nine million dollars gets you on South Beach. <laughs> wow, this closet is the size of one of my bedrooms. And just having some Antonio Luciano is 32 and comes from a wealthy family in the sugarcane business. How is it different putting your money here than putting it in Brazil? Because the price is here is really cheap, not really down now. Really cheap, that is, if you're a rich Brazilian. It's a dramatic comeback for a country once on the brink of economic disaster and with soaring poverty. Maracanã. Blessed with a wealth of natural resources and with the World Cup and Olympics on the horizon, Brazil is on its way to becoming the fifth largest economy in the world. A stable government has helped create a new middle class. And the rich are getting super rich. Brazil is minting 20 new millionaires a week, and many of them are doing their best shopping in Miami. Well, Brazilians, they love shopping and they love the beach. They love the, the Gucci, Prada, Louis Vuitton, Dolce Gabbana, Trump. So everything, they got a brand, recognized, a brand name. They love it. Cristiano Piquet, a Brazilian himself and a former race car driver, is working on his own luxury brand. Seven years ago, he opened a real estate firm catering to Brazilian clients, specializing in million-dollar properties. Our business is doubling every year. Brazilians are buying more and more. And tell me about your clientele. Who is the average client? What are they looking for? What do they want? They are successful Brazilians, uh, business people that are buying their third, fourth vacation home. Less than five years ago, South Florida was ground zero for the real estate crisis, with vacant buildings and foreclosures all around. At the same time, Brazil's economy was starting to surge. As prices there soared, this became the land of opportunity. So these are tower one, two, three. Well, actually the other way. No one knows more about how bad it was and how it bounced back than real estate developer Gil Dezer. What has this wave of Brazilians really done in terms of being able to help the economic situation here in South Florida? It's been a tremendous influx. The Brazilians are coming in. They, they basically saved the South Florida real estate market. Perfect beach day, right? It all seems sunny now, but there were plenty of dark days for Dezer in 2008. His firm has a marketing partnership with the Trump Organization. They had successfully built and sold out two buildings on South Florida's Sunny Isles. Four new towers were under construction. We got stuck in the downturn. And um, what it means to be stuck is we were at that time with about, I want to say, 1,200 apartments under construction at the time. 1,200 apartments he thought had buyers until nearly all of them bailed on their deposits. In one of the worst real estate markets ever, Dezer had to turn around and resell everything. Enter the Brazilians. Bom dia, tudo bem? The Brazilian buyers come in, they pay cash, 
they they don't need financing and they and when we needed to make deals they were there so how many buildings total in the in the trump developments here and what is the percentage of brazilians we did six buildings in total and i would say that we have one building which is entirely brazilian it's uh, you walk in and you say to the main in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and you and you're saying to the main. To the main. We're learning to how to say it. Right. <laughs> right. We're learning how to say it all. Because you're, you're learning how to speak the language. That's you it. have to. You have to. Right. <laughs> Portuguese was in the air at a recent Miami boat show. Brazilians turned out for the parties and the dockside showrooms. They also turned out to be the top buyers. If you see many boats like sold. Yeah, they are Brazilian. They bought they bought in the boat. We have only two days in the boat shows. And two days in the boat shows, and you've sold how many? Four. And these are big boats with all of the amenities. This has a gym. Yeah, if you see, you never see something like that. Uh, let's go see the gym. <laughs> Inside of this boat is amazing. Wow. For 1.8 million, you too could have a gym in your yacht. <laughs> <laughs> no one is rich without a boat. Yeah. I'm rich, so I have to, to have a boat. Okay. That's the way it is in yes, Brazil. Yes, this huh? is good. <laughs> Antonio Lobato, developer and operator of Brazil's biggest marinas, was there looking to establish a U.S. operation. Do you think there's a real demand for a Brazilian marina here in South Florida? Yes, because the Brazil is growing too much, and the people was making a lot of money, so they bought boats here, and they have to put the boats in a, a place. And uh, I suppose that uh, a Brazilian marina is a good place to put the Brazilian boats. And there are more who think just like Lobato, bringing their businesses here, from arms manufacturers to steakhouses. Even the company that owns Burger King is backed by Brazilian billionaires. For Brazilians, says Cristiano Piquet, it's all about spending here and vacationing, not moving here. Everybody's so happy with Brazil. They want to stay in Brazil. I always ask my clients, so you don't like here, so beautiful. No, 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 I'm super happy with Brazil. <laughs> How much of your future development are you relying on and banking on that the Brazilians are going to be here to stay? In my experience, I've learned not to really bank on any one group because you don't know what can happen in their country politically the next day and, and, uh, and the whole story can be over. But for now, the Brazilian story is far from over. They're not just taking Miami but taking Manhattan too, buying up multi-million dollar apartments at some of New York's best addresses. And Cristiano Piquet is getting in on the action. He's opening an office in downtown Manhattan. Meanwhile, back in Miami, Piquet's client, Antonio Luciano, is still shopping. Six car garage. Six car? Yep. Oh, that's awesome. The $9 million apartment wasn't quite right, now he's looking for something with a little more room. Luciano was last seen on Star Island touring a house that's on the market for 17 million. Come over. I like the location, I like everything here. It even has a place to dock a brand new boat. Six car garage, pretty good. <laughs> Natalie Morales is here. You spent part of your growing up time in Brazil. I did. And boy, how times have changed. They certainly have. I was there late 70s, early 80s. That was really the height. We were on the brink of the economic disaster back then. In fact, at the time, it was hyperinflation. Inflation was up to a thousand percent a year. And I remember the currency changing three times from the Cruzeiro, the Cruzado, Novo Cruzado when I lived there. So you know, they could not get the country under control, but now it's a totally different picture there. Now, the other, because we set this piece up in part that they are saving the housing market, mm -hmm. is it a is it a high-end kind of bubble? I mean, the, the fears they voice there at the end, that if something goes wrong, it's all over. Or is this an overall, is this doing better? There really is a trickle-down effect. You're seeing this effect across the board, from single homes to the high-end mm -hmm. condo market. You're seeing increases in prices and homes throughout South Florida and really through the state of Florida by at least 10 percent just in the beginning from the beginning of this year alone. So you're seeing prices going up, demand is going up, there is less inventory on the market and for the first time in a long time, get this Brian, we're actually starting to see bidding wars once again down mm. there. So it's good news for Florida. Imagine that like the old days. Natalie right. Morales, always a pleasure. Sure Thanks thing. for visiting us.